the plutonium in Paducah and Metropolis is real. A radioactive fallout zone exists in 50 to 100 mile radius over this entire community. And, the, and we've got the documentation, and Bynum will talk on it after we get, get everybody else going. But for goodness sakes, it was human experimentation against the kids and all of us in the community. So this is why you're here. Because the attorneys, who I don't have anything to do with other than I, they had to get somebody, and they convinced me I needed to draw the samples, 10 samples. Howard was there, so was Stanley. Let them tell you what they said, not me. And then I got a bunch of documents showing who knew it. And then, well, I'll end this thing, okay? All right, my name is Howard Cook. I worked at uh, Allied Honeywell uh, from 81 to 2007. Uh, <clears throat> some of them in the audience would say I didn't work out there, but I did draw a paycheck. But uh, <clears throat> our problems, I mean, when you're working around uranium, there's always a problem. But you know, there's certain things you could do to protect yourself. Before our major problem started was back in, I think, 89, <clears throat> old man Bush was in office, and they signed a treaty with the Russians to downgrade their nuclear weapons. And uh, so that was all well and good. But then the Russians said, well, we can't sell our UF-6 on an open market like everybody else because it's not pure enough. So somebody got the bright idea. Well, you just send your ore concentrates over to Honeywell and they will convert it and ship it back to you and then you'll be able to sell it on the open market. And that's exactly what we was told. And when they opened up our business, uh, some points there, 90% of what we was doing was going back to Russia. Well, <clears throat> I don't know if it started in like the early 90s, but at some point, the Russians started sending us the blended weapons grade stuff in their drums. Well, <clears throat> if any of you have seen uranium, you know, it's different color, but it, like dirt. It doesn't have a neon sign that says plutonium or thorium. So when you open up that ground to dump it into the system, you think it's just natural uranium concentrate. And you just use your normal protection, which would be a respirator to keep from inhaling it. But you know, you don't think about plutonium that would be hitting on your skin or you know on your coveralls and you're walking around the rest of the day with that exposure <clears throat> but that's what uh, that's what we were doing and uh, we was never told by Honeywell or anybody that that was the case and we had to figure this out on our own and Gary knows that that we tried to make the connection uh, that we was working for DOE and, and we talked about the Russian uranium and uh, and then uh, we came up with the testing and sure enough there was the plutonium, thorium in people's homes that live next to Honeywell and uh, so we uh, we did talk to this this law firm and we thought at first that they was going to help the workers but they went the easy route and just uh, filed a suit for the land owners and uh, so left us out there uh, with no protection so uh, we're still fighting the fight but at least now I think that we've got it out in the public record that there is plutonium and thorium and other dollar products over at that plant that should have never been there because the NRC said that they're not licensed for that and, uh, and another little bit of information was in that meeting where I brought up about the plutonium and the Russian 
drums. Uh, I filed a complaint with the NRC, and of course they told us that you know they wasn't licensed for plutonium, and they're not. And so they went out to investigate, and I got the letter back from them. And they said when they went out there, there wasn't any Russian drums out there that they could send. They couldn't find the one. And so uh, they weren't able to sample any Russian drums. Well, I talked to a guy that was still working out there. And I asked him, I said, do you have any Russian drums out there? He said, oh yeah, we got a bunch of Russian drums. So that shows you that the cover-up goes all the way to the NRC. And, uh, and when you're having to fight Honeywell and the federal government, state, local, it's hard to get anything accomplished. But that's where we're at. And, you know, if we keep fighting, maybe someday somebody will say, oh, yeah, that wasn't right. We should help these people. But I may not be here when that happens. So. <coughs> but that's, uh, that's kind of the background, background of what, uh, how it all started. So what, I'll turn it over. What, what did you do there, Don? Well, that's under debate. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I started in, in the instrument department. Okay. And I worked there for 10 years, and then I went over in the production department. And I worked the, the flooring plant, uh, feeds building, and I worked a lot out in what we call it, the yard, which you had on the raw material and unloaded the HF and ammonia and uh, sulfuric so acid and, and shipped the cylinders out and washed the cylinders and uh, that uh, <coughs> that's another story there of washing the cylinders that come back in yeah. you know it's that was one of the hottest places in the plant but uh, that was where my job, job description was uh, I wanted to bring up about the when we were talking about washing the cover arms, where that water went to, I'm not sure. I don't think it did go uh, the EPF because I remember one time that uh, the facility we called the M off, before all the waste goes to Howard. Don't use an initial because we want the DOJ. What's EMF or whatever you're talking about? You're talking about the, the public operated treatment plant. It's where the shit goes to. Where the where the waste from the humans go? Yes. Okay, I, I appreciate that. Well, you said to get plain about it. Yeah, we, yeah, we all understood that. <laughs> oh, okay, you want to, it's where the crap, human crap went. Yes. And it went into the river, right? Well, at the end of it, uh, one of my jobs was when I was in the yard was to. Uh, what we call stir the shit. You had to go down there and you had to stir the shit so that it would dissolve. But it, after that, it was went to the river. But I remember one time that it came up hot and they had to go down there, they got contractors come in to drum it off. So that tells you that either they was sending from the laundry or there was a lot of hot people out there for that to come up radioactive and they had to drum it off. Well, when you said they had, it. quote, they had to drum it off. Yes. What was off? And you got a four letter word, I know it's coming. Mm -hmm. What was all? They had to drum the shit off. Ah! Okay. <laughs> all right, I got you. Okay. I guess so, I can bleep that right by. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I don't know where the, where the worst of cover rolls went to, but that could have been that it just went straight into the sewer system to the M Hall building. But anyway, if it was, that thing was hot constantly. And uh, and then eventually it went on out to the river and then down to the people of shop. So and then any any place south. So I just want to bring that point up. Yeah. Uh, again we've got 
okay, we've got a Navy veteran who I, unfortunately I'm related to, and he's a cousin, and I could kill him sometime. But step up, Glenn, and let her rip. I want to know what the term hot means. That's what I, that's what you missed that. He explained it. Right. Yeah. When we refer to hot, that means radioactive. Glenn, Glenn, excuse me, you missed it again. Listen. The hot, when we refer to something being hot, means that it's radioactive. Above normal background. background. Yes. Um, another thing I didn't mention, all of us that worked out there, we would have releases of the UF6 and, you know, the company would come back and said, well, we've done the monitor and it didn't get past the fence. So at that meeting, other night we had when over in Metropolis, I told the lawyers, I said, maybe what we should do is just get some of that fencing to put around people's house because if it can't get over it to get outside, then it won't be able to get into it to get to your house. So that may be a, may be a fixed, fast fix for the radioactive material. But that's what they always told us. Oh no, it never did get past the fence. So that fence is some kind of magical yeah. barrier that the radiation can't go past. It's like our yellow tape. Yeah. <laughs> Once well, you we, put the yellow tape down, <clears throat> nothing gets out of that yellow tape. Well, we had don't the, believe me. We had the painted things around on the floor. You know, yes. that's supposed to keep the radiation in there too. From hurt you. Yeah. It floats in the air, lands on the outside on the walkway. And they Howard, get up and walk back over and get inside that tape. Now I've got someone, and and, and Mike, we're going to get. Can can you, can you stay for a second? Uh, raise your hand if you've been at. Let me let me see the hands for Honeywell. If you want to want to kind of work this one two with me, because as you're talking, I can then bring out the evidence that is is handed in front of the U.S. Justice Department. And we all know who who controls that now by now, right? Who is the one that, who is the one individual in the United States that controls an investigation uh, that the Justice Department and FBI will trigger? Who is that person? Donald Trump is the chief executive of the United States. However, it's not Donald Trump that is getting this information out. So how many of you in this room understand that my good friend, Dr. Clinton Cook, and Mitch McConnell were just like this? Bob, let me get this right there. I'm a nuclear whistleblower because McConnell was allegedly my friend and Dr. Cook's friend. Dr. Cook was the OBGYN we talked about earlier, surgeon, trained the surgeons here. Cancers are horrendous, hideous. So Dr. Clinton Cook and Mitch McConnell were friends. And Mitch McConnell, I was told, is the most powerful politician in the world, not US. And that's why we've traced the drums of the material from Paducah over to Honeywell and up to Portsmouth. And that's why we're the deadly triangle, we might as well call it right now. <coughs> because the Uranium One scandal was captured by me, passed on to uh, Tucker Carlson. Remember now, it's not about a Republican or Democrat because guess what we found? They're both together. And they were the ones that actually concealed the, the processing uh, in Russia of highly enriched Uranium diluting it down and shipping it over here and Honeywell received it and we've got a company that we don't want to talk about yet because we've got their documents this man right over here we'll get to him he'll interview we'll all interview him in a minute but this man right here is a young man that got the documents when he got one of them that's all I had to see he's an amazing young environmental investigator journalist investigator so I want to thank him for coming all the way from California, okay? And Vina knows he, I know he, so, so it's about time, and I told him, keep your head down, you're too young, and they will blacklist him for life. How old are you? 30. 
a long time and not get a job. But anyway, yeah. we're, we're going to take care of it. Because this is going out across America. But it's also going out to President Trump, who deep down doesn't like the veterans. Well, it's better not say he likes abusing our veterans. But we found out Donald Trump is a businessman. Does everybody understand that? He's a billionaire. Does everybody understand that? Does he need anybody from Mitch McConnell telling him how many more billions he needs to get? I don't know how many billions you have to have to be happy, but Donald Trump's already acting like he's happy, okay? So just remember this. I'm giving Donald Trump personally, as of December 16th, 2016, while he was a president-elect, the evidence that they were destroying the veterans' records, destroying the nuclear workers' records, hiding the cancers, altering the cancer registry in Kentucky, and Dr. Clinton Cook and Dr. Harry Carlo set the registry up. And, they, and Dr. Cook is on, on a YouTube our, uh, publication that this young man put on the internet, and he says it. I set up the cancer registries. I set up this. I set up that with Dr. Carlos. Now, I'm not the one that brought Harry Carlos into this. But I want to tell you, if Dr. Carlos was a cancer doctor for all those years, don't think for a minute that Dr. Harry Carlos doesn't know where the cancer cluster is. Because I've seen the map. He sees the same thing I've seen, but I haven't talked to Dr. Carlos. Dr. Clinton Cook saw the cancer clusters and got up in front of the cab on August 17, 2006 and said, I've, I've, what I've just seen is awful, basically. I'm going to summarize it, not verbatim. What he said was, you've got a problem with depleted nuclear material. It's in the cylinders and in the tails. <clears throat> he didn't have to tell me that. This document, well he did, I give him credit because I haven't picked this up at that time. This is 2006. <clears throat> this document I found a year ago. In a box with USEC workers, union workers, USW workers, and is, is Marshall still in the room? Marshall, you still here? One of, well, okay, now I don't want to say too much, because like I said, we're in WA. Now you just have to, we're an enhanced in NWA. Nuclear Whistleblowers Alliance. And is there anybody in this room that doesn't want the truth out? Because we'll deputize every one of you to tell the truth right now. NWA is a thousand of us, whistleblowers, Oak Ridge, Paducah, Portsmouth, Pinellas, Rocky Flats, Hanford. We don't have to tell everybody what's going on. We just have to show the facts up front. And I'm just trying to explain to you that we've already caught Mitch McConnell concealing the tails at the plant in 1990. And then he, then he stopped our SEC, especially if you had one of the 22 cancers. That ended in, in 92. But this letter is dated April 2000. Now for Pete Sykes people, if you can't connect the dots, then you're going to see now that Mitch McConnell absolutely controlled and reduced our SEC. He's the owner of reducing the SEC and stopping the workers' claims at Paducah, Portsmouth, and Honeywell. Now, Oak Ridge is on their own. They've had a special favorable pro, uh, claims treatment down there, and, and quite frankly, it's up to them to get up here. Vina came all the way to Portsmouth, from Portsmouth. We've got our NW. How many, how many of you call yourselves NWA members as of right now? Howard, you're not one? You know, Nuclear Whistleblowers Alliance. I'm a whistleblower. <laughs> well, the, okay, so I'm, I, want, I want all of you to understand. The NWA is a united union in itself of honest truth. We're not naysayers. We've got the evidence. So if the evidence shows all of you that you're, an in, that you're NWA co-workers, Jeff Walburn, Chick Lawson, Paul Gro uh, Gro Brogdon, they couldn't be here. Tragic, there's some tragedy with some of our workers right now as we speak. These are the bravest son of a guns I've ever been around. 
I didn't coin the NWA. And Jeff Walburn, you did. But Jeff is working in parallel with the guy that just wrote Secret Empires, Peter Schweitzer. He's coming here in the next few months or weeks. He's writing all of this as a book, but I got news for him. He's not getting my book material because we're talking about five or six books here. Because we did, how many of you all knew that we were processing Russian uranium, taking out the plutonium after, oh, yeah, here we go, by the way, just a minute. You couldn't have known it yet because Bob found the documents just recently. The reason, now we knew there was plutonium being shipped in, and no matter what anybody told them, what did the John Glenn and everybody else, they said, we're going to get to the bottom of it. They didn't get to the bottom of it. We got to the bottom of it. And we put it on Facebook, out to the DOJ, certified mail, and everything else, and that's when, that's when they got nervous. Because these attorneys picked it up. But I will tell you, these attorneys do not re represent, nor should they represent, nuclear workers. Because they decided to file the, pro the property owner lawsuit first. We're about nuclear workers being poisoned. Anybody doubt, anybody disagree with that? So we're not here to help some law firm come in and make a bunch of money off of property, sir, uh, property lawsuits, right, Howard? No. You're not here to listen to WPSD try to pump you for information, are you? What we've just found today, once we, we blocked WPSD, Channel 6, we blocked the w, uh, Paducah Sun, you all know why to do it. They're not here to help you. They're here to videotape you to find out who you are. We, block, we actually now have blocked WSIL TV after meeting with our black, black claimants that had their records stopped, destroyed. Right, Stan? Yeah. They would not give up the videotape after we got done with the meeting. I taped them myself. So they got a problem. So then we invited w, uh, K, KFES. Uh, let's see. I don't see them in the room, do you? So what, you're, what you've got to understand is everybody that's a nuclear worker in Western Kentucky is under a microscope to keep your mouth shut or your rec you will never get your claim paid. Now how many in this room would rather leave right now and suck up to them and double cross all your co-workers? Anybody put your hand up, I don't mind. By the way, for the record, not a soul in this room has decided that that if they win their, if they're promised their claim, they'll run out of here and double cross everybody in this room. Quite frankly, what you don't understand is I like to double cross. Now you're saying he's crazy. No, when they do it, we know who's getting paid and you're not. How's that? You see what I'm doing, Ronnie? I've got to get the evidence where they're liars and that's what we're doing. And then when they lie, out comes the plutonium in the houses that I sang. It took George and I six months to get this law firm to tell us the truth of what my samples had in them. Now, by the way, I did split samples for any of you sampling people around, and you'd better know what that is. And well, I'll just tell you, I get I get the same dirt put in another bag, and I trust the attorneys. I'll I'll say it this way, and George just agree with yes. Two days ago, George and I were asked to meet these same attorneys at a cemetery a north of the plant. Their, their reason allegedly was to draw a dust sample. Correct, George? Yep. Yep. Except what, what I suspected with Marco Calto and Strong Bear and Kevin Thompson, that they're doing exactly what I told them they had to do to come in and win lawsuits for all of you for they, because they lied. They actually, were, they, they know what, they know where to make the money, okay? So I've got the best constitutional attorney, and I'll tell you his name. Remember this name, Mick Harrison. Mick Harrison and the former DOJ attorney, my attorney, Dean Thurman. Now he's my company attorney, but he's out of wool. Each one of them independent said, don't trust those attorneys. I tried my darndest to say, all of you, please don't go sign up for property owner lawsuits until you get an attorney and see what it means. Well, Monica's not here right now, but she picked it up. 
once you sign up with them, they can drag it out to where you're going to get probably 10%. They get the rest. Now, now it's a good question, isn't it? All you have to do is walk in and say, how much am I going to get? Well, by the time they get done explaining it to you, a bunch of them left that meeting over there. Now, I'm not trying to run them down because we don't have anything to do with it. But George and I, the other night, when I had him standing right by my door of my truck, and you know if he's standing by my door of my truck, you get the rest of the message. He then said, as I put him on the spot, when are you going to, I said, when are you going to give me the, the results of the samples in the home? Well, it, the, the, the lab guy, Marco, called to him, wouldn't tell me. He said, you'll have to get that from Kevin Thompson. He's standing right at my window. And Kevin Thompson said, your samples had, they tested positive for plutonium. And I believe he said cesium-137, right, George? I think they said, yeah. yeah. And thorium? So in other words, let me summarize what this means. They sat on plutonium in the home in Metropolis since last March, since this March 2018. Now I'm the one that sampled uh, Mr. Hildebrand's house, Quentin Hildebrand. I was so upset because I found gold in the sample. Do you know what gold in a sample means? That on my cell phone you can see it? It's a micron, it's a, it's a micron, what do you call it, a uh, spectrographic microscopic view. The trigger. And it was a gold nugget in their living room. The gold comes from Russian trigger material. If it's in his living room a mile from the plant, how did it get there? Was he dealing in Russian uranium being cleansed at Paducah? Because they cleaned, they took it over after you all did it. Howard, Ronnie, and Stanley, and they ran it through the Paducah plant to take out the plutonium. Then sent it to where, Vina? Then they sent it to Vina's company, or Vina's plant, to upgrade it to 95% weapon, or 90 over, uh, well, uh, weapons grade uranium. Then off it went out of the country. Now, now wait a minute. The attorneys that I'm dealing with are trying are scratching their heads saying, where in the crap are we sending highly enriched uranium or enriched uranium? Where is he going? Well, Tucker Carlson asked the same thing last November 2nd, 2017, on his show at the 16-minute mark. Listen to what he says. This is scary. Because we're Americans. Why would you be shipping our enriched uranium to China? That's a good question, isn't it? All of my questions are going to be good from here on out. Somebody better start telling us what the hell is going on. Oh, excuse me. What's going on? So anyway, you're you know, right. go ahead, Doc. Let me bring up one more thing, and I'll go sit down. <clears throat> when we, uh, in the Pete's building, on the the ore side of it, ore prep, green salt, you had a lot of screws, elevators that move the material. Well, when they would get plugged, you had to take them, the screens off and clean the screws out and all this. But now the elevators was a different story. And uh, I was working with that little man back there, Bradis Morrison, <laughs> one night and the elevator was plugged, it wouldn't, wouldn't start. And uh, so I just came over to the building, he worked there for quite some time. And I said, what are we gonna do? He said, well, I'm gonna take his plate off down here. He was in the basement. I said, uh, well, what's gonna happen then? He said, all that ore is gonna run out. I said, all right, that's what you wanna do. But I'm not gonna be a part of it. So I was up on the first floor, looking down in the man lift, as he's taking that off. That ore come out, it covered, I couldn't, I couldn't see the little guy. He was just covered. That whole floor was covered with uranium. Now, when they do the dose reconstruction, all they use at Honeywell is the urine samples. They don't use the, the air sampling 
I wonder why. All they use is your urine sample. Our urine samples were taken two to four days after your last work day. Well, that'd be like the cops pull me over to Saturday night and say, boy, are you drunk? I said, well, I may be a little bit. Well, you come back in two days and we'll check you and see if you're drunk. <laughs> so that's, that's why nobody that goes through that dose reconstruction is coming up to the limit because there's no way that it's still going to be in your urine. It's still in your body, but your kidneys has already processed that, processed that out of your kidneys at that time. So uh, it's all a big scam and nobody cares. It's set up so that nobody gets their settlement. And because the dose reconstruction will come back and say, no, you're under 50%, you don't qualify. But that's that's the reason why we don't qualify. Yeah. But when you see that that big guy back there disappear in a cloud of dust, you know that ain't good. <laughs>